What were some of Newton's career accomplishments? Newton, 1642-1727, was born in Lincolnshire, England, and attended Cambridge University, graduating with A.B. A. in 1665. Between 1665 and 1667, working independently while stuck at home when Cambridge was shut down due to the plague. He discovered the binomial theorem, the fundamentals of calculus. The modern principle of how light was composed, and the basics of his theory of gravity. He held the post of Lucasian Professor of Mathematics at Cambridge after 1669 and was a fellow of the Royal Society from 1671 to 1703, after which he served as its president for the rest of his life. Newton's system of the world or his unifying theory of mechanics and his mathematical physics was Published in Philosophia Naturalis Principia Mathematica, The Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. What is philosophy? Philosophy is the activity of seeking wisdom. In Greek, which was the first language of Western philosophy, philosophy means love of wisdom. One loves wisdom by trying to figure out what it is. There are many ways human beings seek wisdom, including art, religion, and lived experience. Philosophy is distinct because it seeks wisdom through the systematic use of reason. Philosophers focus on ideas, the meaning of ideas, and beliefs by analyzing them. They break them down into their parts and then build them back up again and combine them in new ways. In addition to analysis, philosophers reflect on what goes on in the mind and the world. They seek wisdom through intuitions of whole structures of thought or experience. How did Elaine Locke apply pragmatism to issues of race and culture? Locke was interested in values and valuation, cultural pluralism, and race relations. He argued that each cultural group has a distinct identity, which should not conflict with the citizenship of its members in a wider whole. Thus, African Americans could have the cultural identity, i.e.s. Supported by the Harlem Renaissance and remain Americans. This model of identity was the intellectual foundation of Locke's efforts in promoting black culture. But some now view it as an applied pragmatic strategy. Locke believed that black identity was largely the result of economic and political forces and not biology. However, his pragmatic strategy was not to argue this belief directly, but to promote an understanding of race as culture within a broader society that emphasized false biological notions of race toward the goal of eventual racial equality. How did Robert Burton apply scientific methods to his own mind? Robert Burton, 
1577-1640, spent most of his life at Oxford University, where he was vicar of St. Thomas Church. He was later appointed rector of Segrave, Leicester. He was a mathematician with interests in astrology and was known to be companionable and cheerful. However, he suffered all his life from a heavy heart and hatchling in my head. A kind of imposthume in my head, which I was very desirous to be unladen of. In the preface to the Anatomy of Melancholy, 1621, he explained the work as therapeutic. I write of melancholy, by being busy to avoid melancholy. There is no greater cause of melancholy than idleness, no better cure than business. What was Ralph Barton Perry's realism? Perry wrote The New Realism, Cooperative Studies in Philosophy, 1912, with five others, Edwin B. Holt, Walter T. Marvin, William Pepperell Montague, Walter Boughton Pitkin, and Edward Gleason Spaulding. They were in revolt against both idealism and dualism. Holding that what we perceive and remember are what they appear to be, as we are conscious of them. Their conclusions were similar to those of G. E. Moore's, 1873-1958, Common Sense Attack on Idealism. Who was Pierre Gassendi? Pierre Gassendi, 1592-1655, was a Catholic priest who was highly influential in justifying empirical science to religious dogmatists. He studied at Digny and Ix and became professor of rhetoric at Digny when he was 21. After he received his doctorate in theology at Avignon and was ordained a priest, he became professor of philosophy at Ix. He also pursued astronomical research. His Exercitations Paradoxicae Adversus Aristotelius, 1625, set out all that he thought was dubious and mistaken in Aristotle's writings. His principal attack on Aristotle was against the possibility of certain knowledge in science. Gassendi argued against Aristotle, 384-322 BCE. In his claim that certainty was neither possible nor necessary in science. At the same time, he sought to defend atomism against church doctrine. Gassendi developed what came to be known as a mitigated or moderate skepticism that supported the conclusions of scientific inquiry. What was an essay in defense of the female sex? In an essay in defense of the female sex, the usurpation of man, and the tyranny of custom. Here in England, especially, 1696, marriage was directly attacked. John Locke's, 1632-1704, empiricist epistemology was put to use. 
in a search for social causes of the inequality between the sexes. The writer did not argue that women were as good as men. Claiming that they were actually better on account of their intellectual superiority, which resulted from differences in nature. How was Hume a man of contradictions? Hume is famous for having written, Be a philosopher, but amidst all your philosophy, be still a man. Hume described himself as a man of mild dispositions, of command of temper. Of an open, social, and cheerful humor, capable of attachment. But little susceptible of enmity, and of great moderation in all my passions. During his last painful illness with cancer, when his friend Adam Smith 1723-1790, visited him, he was calm and had no regrets about his atheism. Nor did he desire to make a religious conversion in case there was an afterlife. He did in fact have a lifelong reputation of being pleasant and highly reasonable. He was known as the The Good David, in England and L.E. Bon Davide in France. But, concerning his moderation, Hume very much enjoyed fine food and drink and weighted over 300 pounds. And as for his mildness, his friendship with Jean Jacques Rousseau, 1712 to 1778, suggests otherwise. When Rousseau was given refuge in England, partly due to Hume's efforts, in 1766, Hume soon came to regret it. Although L.E. Bon Davide had enjoyed great fame in the salons of Paris, Rousseau was a world celebrity of greater wattage. Rousseau was also financially pressed and very sensitive to public opinion. He wore exotic costumes and was made fun of in state English society. Hume did nothing to temper this reaction. Rousseau soon became distrustful of Hume's friendship and accused him of perfidy. Instead of letting the matter rest, Hume published their correspondence. Going against the advice of his close friends, who were prepared to make allowances for Rousseau. Because they knew how personally troubled he was. This publication, together with Hume's denial that he had himself leaked the letters, destroyed his friendship with Rousseau and incurred skepticism about his own goodwill, good sense, and underlying motives. Who was Augusta Comte? Isadora Marie Augusta Francoise Xavier Comte. 1798-1857, was famous and influential in his day as a sociologist, and even coined the word sociology. He was the first Western sociologist. Comte has also endured as the founder of positivism. Comte taught mathematics for a while at L'Ecole Polytechnique in Paris, where he himself was educated. Although mental illness to the extent of psychotic episodes that required hospitalization interfered with his work. His condition stabilized enough for him to complete his major work during a marriage that ended in divorce. After the woman he loved in a subsequent platonic relationship died. 
he formulated his mission to create a new religion of humanity. Kohn published Course de Philosophie Positive Course in Positive Philosophy, in six volumes from 1830 to 1832 Which counter-enlightenment figures had lasting effects on philosophy? Giovanni Battista, Giambattista, Vico, or Vigo, 1668-1744 has in recent years been rediscovered, or discovered, as an important philosopher. Edmund Burke, 1729-1797, was the most explicit conservative of modern times. Although Joseph Marie de Maister, 1753-1821, held similar views. Also, Jonathan Swift, 1667 to 1745 deserves mention as a mordant critic of the establishment in general and the marquis de sada 1740 to 1814 represents a kind of extreme marginality in his depravity which marginality was later taken up by 19th and 20th century progressives he also remains genuinely outrageous What other continental traditions are new to Western philosophy? Recent decades have seen renewed interest in African, Japanese, Chinese, and Indian philosophies among Euro-American philosophers. Some of this work has been called comparative philosophy because it seeks to relate themes that are well-established and well-developed philosophies in their continents of origin to traditional interests in Western philosophy. Japanese, Chinese, and Indian philosophies admit to the comparative treatment because they have long well-established textual traditions. However, African philosophy is a less clear case. Not because it fails to treat issues that in the Western tradition would without doubt be considered philosophical. But because much of it has endured through oral traditions. Still, a broad recognition of African culture and its historical civilizations, after the 1960s. Led to the Euro-American perspective of Afrocentrism among some members of the African diaspora. What did Augustine confess in Confessions? The importance of Augustine's, 354-430, confessions lies less in what he disclosed about himself and more in its intimate, first-person style of writing, which became a distinct genre in future religious works, as well as philosophical treatises. His confessions, written when he was in his forties, relates his religious yearnings, strivings, and happiness. Augustine's early education was in rhetoric and literature. He claims that when, at the age of 18, he read Cicero's now lost dialogue. Hortensius, he was inspired to devote his life to the search for wisdom. Although he converted to Christianity in 386, 
he made a living teaching rhetoric. And for a while his main religious interest was in Manasianism. Manasianism denied the crucifixion of Jesus, united Christianity with Buddhism. And was preoccupied with struggles between good and evil, or light and darkness. Augustine came into contact with Bishop Ambrose and Christian Neoplatonists in Milan and found a sufficiently sophisticated form of Christianity that appealed to him. Augustine believed that Neoplatonism anticipated the basic Christian doctrines about God, the creation, and divine presence. When he returned to his home in North Africa, he was ordained as a priest and then became Bishop of Hippo. He preached, traveled, and corresponded voluminously. In his scholarly and devotional activities, he came to believe that the Christian scriptures, particularly the Gospel account of the life of Jesus, were more important than the writings of philosophers. He concluded that more important than belief, which was an intellectual matter, was understanding, which began with faith, believe in order that you may understand. Understanding required a vision of God. Who was Ralph Waldo Emerson? Ralph Waldo Emerson, 1803-1882, was the leading 19th-century American transcendentalist. His essays and activism not only established him as an intellectual for his time, but also provided a model for subsequent American intellectuals, particularly the pragmatists. Emerson's main writings, which are still read today most are free online include Nature, 1836, his first book, which contains the essays Nature, Commodity, Beauty, Language, Discipline, Idealism, Spirit, Prospects, The American Scholar, Divinity School Address, Literary Ethics, The Method of Nature, Man the Reformer, Introductory Lecture on the Times, The Conservative, The Transcendentalist. And The Young American, there is also Essays, First Series, 1841, Containing History, Self-Reliance. Compensation, Spiritual Laws, Love, Friendship, Prudence, Heroism, The Oversoul, Circles. Intellect and Art, and Essays, Second Series, 1844, which includes the poet, experience, character, manners, gifts, nature, politics, nominalist and realist, and New England reformers. Other books include poems, 1847, Miscellanies, Embracing Nature, Addresses, and Lectures. 1849, Representative Men, 1850, including essays on Plato and Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. English Traits, 1856, which is about his travels, The Conduct of Life, 1860. The Poetry Collection Mayday and Other Pieces, 1867, and Society and Solitude, 1870. Emerson's last series of essays were lectures given at Harvard University.
in 1871 and posthumously published as Natural History of Intellect, 1904. There is also the correspondence of Thomas Carlyle and R. W. Emerson, 1883. What was William James' pragmatic ethics? James thought that values require beings with emotions and wants. Judgments of value are objective when care for one another results in a standard for a community. This results in a shared or common world. Moral choices determine our character. Besides decisions connected to physical pleasure and pain. There are higher ideals that should direct our future experience, and, if necessary, be modified by that experience. Moral progress results when more inclusive ideals are substituted for less inclusive ones. Nevertheless, all ideals are only provisional. Who was Martin Heidegger? Martin Heidegger, 1889-1976 was the phenomenological ontologist who first united existentialism with phenomenology. But later revealed that his true concern was ontology. He is considered one of the titans of Western philosophy and had more direct enduring influence over 20th century continental philosophy than any other thinker. Heidegger wrote extensively on the history of philosophy, developing his own phenomenological analyses. His main books include his doctoral dissertation The Doctrine of Judgment in Psychologism. 1914, his Habilitation, in Europe, Ph.D. write two dissertations. One to get a degree as a scholar and the second to qualify them to teach on a university level. The Doctrine of Categories and Signification in Dun Scotus, 1914, his most famous being and time, 1927. And then Introduction to Metaphysics, 1953, What is Called Thinking, 1954, What is Philosophy? 1956, On the Way to Language, 1959, Nietzsche I and II, 1961, and Phenomenology and Theology, 1970. Transcripts of Heidegger's lectures were partly published in 1975, the complete works would constitute over 100 volumes. Heidegger is also known for articles on art and poetry. As well as his essay The Question Concerning Technology. What happened to Locke during his life and what were some of his important publications? John Locke was born in Rington, Somerset, England. His father was an attorney and justice of the peace who fought on the parliamentary side against Charles I. At Westminster School, which Locke began attending in 1646, he learned the classics, Hebrew and Arabic. From Westminster, he went to Oxford University. 
where he disagreed with the scholastic philosophy that was taught. After he achieved his master's degree, he lectured in Latin and Greek. And in 1664 he was given the position of censor of moral philosophy. When his father died in 1661, Locke inherited enough money to be financially independent. He soon met such famed scientists as Robert Boyle, Isaac Newton, and renowned physician Thomas Sydenham, who inspired Locke to train as a medical doctor. Locke never practiced medicine but was considered knowledgeable in this area all his life. In 1666, Locke met Lord Ashley, Earl of Shaftesbury. Shaftesbury suffered from an infected cyst on his liver, and Locke oversaw his surgery. Including the insertion of a silver tube to drain the wound. The Earl's gratitude after recovery resulted in a long-term patronage. Shaftesbury supported Locke's philosophical endeavors and his nomination to the Royal Society. In 1668, conversations with colleagues Locke met through that connection resulted in the early drafts of his An Essay Concerning Human Understanding, 1689. Locke also served Shaftesbury in practical political ways that resulted in some of his most important contributions. He drafted a constitution for British colonial Carolina and was secretary to the Council of Trade and Plantations. Shaftesbury was tried for treason due to his leadership of the parliamentary opposition to the Stuarts. He was acquitted, but left England for Holland. Locke also left, and while he was in Holland, his position at Oxford was taken away by the king. Then James II denounced him as a traitor after the Duke of Monmouth's failed rebellion. Locke continued to write, working on an essay concerning human understanding. 1689, and his first letter concerning toleration, 1689. He also became involved with the plan to put the Protestants William and Mary on the English throne. Locke advised William, and after the glorious rebellion of 1688, he escorted Mary. Princess of Orange, on her ship back to England. In 1689 and 1690, Locke's two major works an essay concerning human understanding and two treatises of civil government were completed. Always suffering from poor health, Locke then retired from his active involvements in politics. Still, he went on to write some thoughts concerning education, 1693, and the reasonableness of Christianity. 1695, followed by a vindication of the reasonableness of Christianity, 1695. This last work sparked a controversy between Locke and Edward Stillingfleet, Bishop of Worcester. Locke's denial of evidence for substance was taken by Stillingfleet to be a denial of the Anglican Church's doctrine of the Trinity, as well as a barrier to life after death through the immortality of the soul. What was Ayn Rand's virtue of selfishness? Rand believed that the highest human good was individual happiness, which is achieved through rationality. 
every individual has an elevated duty to further his or her own self-interest. And others do not have a right to demand that one sacrifice oneself or one's interests simply because they are weaker or in need. In this sense, Rand was an ethical egoist. What survives of Aristotle's work? After Aristotle left the Lyceum, many of his books and dialogues were never seen again. And other works of his were hidden in a vault for two centuries. Indeed, until the European Renaissance, Aristotle's writings suffered a pattern of loss and rediscovery. A good part of Aristotle's existing corpus may have been reconstructed by his students from lecture notes they took. Or compiled years later by Aristotelians consulting secondary sources. Some of it may have been written by Aristotle or other members of the Lyceum as lecture preparation. Scholars now agree that the following works of Aristotle have been lost, dialogues in the same style as Plato. A vast collection of natural observations, popular publications, lectures on the good and Plato's forms. As many as 158 constitutions for Greek states. Of which only the one for Athens survives. In the 1st century CE, Andronicus of Rhodes organized the existing Aristotelian corpus into its present form. But the earliest transcriptions of this are from the 9th century. The first critical edition of Aristotle's works was published by the Berlin Academy in 1831 it is estimated to represent as little as a fifth of Aristotle's total output. But in amounting to about 1,500 pages of small print in typical translations of Aristotle's collected works. It provides a substantial basis for scholarly reference today. What did Wollstonecraft claim on behalf of women? Mary Estelle, 1666-1731, and Elizabeth Elstub, 1683-1756. Preceded Wollstonecraft in arguing for women's recognition as thinking persons. Estelle claimed that women were entitled to be educated. Her reason for this was that women had the same God-given capacity to reason as men. Her justification for educating women was that this could help them be better wives and mothers. Wollstonecraft shared Estelle's views and defended them more systematically. She also claimed that the current treatment of privileged women as spaniels and toys was demeaning to them. She took Jean-Jacques Rousseau, 1712-1778, to task for claiming in his hugely popular novel Emile. 1762, that women should be educated to provide soothing pleasure to men. She wrote openly about female sexuality and the emotional vulnerability of women to rakes. Arguing that women were educated to be impulsive, emotional, and gullible. What was George Santayana's ontology?
he rejected the kind of philosophical skepticism about physical reality that had led to idealism. But he thought one positive effect of that skepticism was to show that essence is what is ultimately real. However, people can't experience pure essences. Our animal faith posits a world beyond our immediate experience. That world is made up of essence and matter, and also truth and spirit. Matter is constantly changing, but it has a continuity, which renders it a substance. Truth is about matter and what exists, whereas spirit is pure transcendental consciousness. Spirit intuits. Santa Yana described intuition as the direct and obvious possession of the apparent without commitments of any sort about its truth, significance, or material existence. What were the main ideas of the scientific revolution? Some of the key ideas and theories that came out of the scientific revolution were that Earth revolves around the Sun. Matter is composed of small particles. Everything that happens can be explained mechanically or mechanistically with the help of mathematics. General principles or natural laws must be supported by observable data, and Perhaps most important, that science itself is an exciting activity that will benefit mankind. What is ethical egoism? Ethical egoism is the moral system that everyone ought to pursue his or her own self-interest above all other goals. As with ethical relativism, it has both a descriptive and prescriptive form. Descriptive ethical egoism holds that everyone always pursues their own self-interest. Prescriptive ethical egoism holds that everyone should always pursue his or her own self-interest. Insofar as she thought that communism and socialism were evil and widespread, Ayn Rand. 1905-1982, was not a descriptive ethical egoist, although she was clearly a prescriptive ethical egoist. How did James Martineau make Immanuel Kant's metaphysics religious? Martineau relied on intuition to claim that the phenomenal world mirrors a noumenal world. The world of things we cannot experience, in which real objects are causally related. He held that this reality is the result of God's will. In ethics he claimed that we choose our motives first and then our actions. Intuition tells us which ones are the higher motives and that the highest one is reverence. He meant that the desire to revere motivates our best actions. What is philosophy of technology? Ideas of technology go back to Plato, c. 428 c. 348 BCE, and Aristotle, 384 to 322 BCE, 
who spoke of techni or knowledge of art and craft, which included arithmetic and medicine. Such knowledge understands itself, according to universals and causes. It can be taught and is distinct from physis, or nature. Contemporary philosophy of technology is a multidisciplinary field dedicated to studying the cultural effects and causes of technology. Both historically and in its emergent forms. The American Philosophical Association publishes a newsletter on philosophy and computers, and there are academic journals such as Ends and Means. Net Future Technology and Human Responsibility, and Techni, Research in Philosophy and Technology. Who was Robert Nozick? Robert Nozick, 1938-2002, is considered important for his idea of minimal government. He was educated at Columbia, Princeton and Oxford universities and became a philosophy professor at Pellegrino University and Harvard. His most influential work was Anarchy, State, and Utopia. 1974, which was written in response to John Rawls, 1921-2002, A Theory of Justice, 1971. Additional books by Nozick include Socratic Puzzles, 1997. The Nature of Rationality, 1993, and The Examined Life, 1989. What did Aquinas contribute to metaphysics in the non-religious sense? Thomas Aquinas, 1224-1274, was very interested in the question, what does it mean to be? He sought to understand reality as a whole and tried to formulate explanations of all experience in terms of ultimate causes about metaphysics in relation to its considerations of immaterial substances. He said, although this science considers these items, it does not think of each of them as its subject, its subject is simply being in general. Taken literally, this claim about metaphysics describes it as transcendent of religion. Because religious entities have being and their being is the subject of the most general philosophical study. Metaphysically, Aquinas determined that every being is distinct and undivided. Unum, it has meaning, verum, and there is something good about it, bonum. Aquinas distinguished between what a being is and that it is. What it is, is its essence, and that it is, is its esse. We can know the essences of things without considering their existence. But it requires an act of judgment to determine esse, that something is. What did Prodicus tell his audiences? Prodicus of CEOs, c. 465 to 415 BCE, said that Empedocles' four elements of earth, wind, fire, and water were divine, a doctrine that the playwright Aristophanes, c. 
446 to 386, made fun of in the birds. He also thought that whatever was necessary to human beings was considered holy. Which was not a traditional view of religion in ancient Greece. Prodicus argued that there is no absolute good. Because what is good for one man is not necessarily good for another, a doctrine that supported relativism. In his discussions of language, Prodicus tried to show how no two words can have the same meaning. He also disagreed with Democritus, c. 460-371 BCE who had said that there could be different names for the same thing. What did George Herbert Mead contribute to philosophy? Mead was a philosopher of emergence, in his studies of Darwinian evolution. He proposed that new forms of life change the nature of the past. Because after a new form exists, what preceded and led to it needs to be reinterpreted. Mead did not publish while he lived. Although his works were prepared by his students to appear posthumously as Mind, Self, and Society, 1934. Did Hume believe that we have free will? Yes. Hume believed in free will, but in a strange way. He argued that our freedom is based on the fact that we are determined by our existing character. If there were no causal link between our motives and our actions, then there would be no moral basis for praise and blame. That is, we do not praise or blame others for what they do accidentally or as flukes. For Hume, freedom therefore consists in the liberty to do what we want, or a lack of constraint. Our spontaneity is not the same as indifference, or the lack of a cause for doing one thing or the other. He wrote, by liberty, then, we can mean a power of acting or not acting. According to the determinations of the will. Now this hypothetical liberty is. Universally allowed to belong to everyone who is not a prisoner and in chains. Who was Boethius? Boethius, Anicius Manlius Severinus, c. 480 c. 525, was the most famous Christian Neoplatonist in the West. He wrote extensively on the Trinity and produced many influential translations of commentaries on Aristotle, as well as works on education, science, and philosophy. His focus on logic later became a preoccupation with methods of thought among scholastic philosophers. In his commentary on Porphyry, 233-309, Boethius set up the problem of universals. Based on conflicts between the ideas of Plato and Aristotle, which was to preoccupy scholastic thinkers between 1000 and 1150.
who was Gazalakados. Gazalakados Dixixen Simon, 1890-1967, was a Hungarian general during World War II. As well as Prime Minister of Hungary from August to October of 1944. In August 1944, Lakatos and Miklos Horthy overthrew the German government of Hungary with one tank. While in power, they prevented the deportation of Jews. The Germans retaliated by kidnapping Horthy's son. Horthy surrendered and Lakatos stepped down. When the war was over, Lakatos immigrated to Australia. Imra adopted Lakatos' name because he found his personal courage in the service of freedom very inspirational. What was original about Locke's thoughts concerning education? Locke originally wrote down his ideas in answer to his relative Edward Clark, who asked how he should raise his son to grow up to be a gentleman. There was broad interest in this subject among a new group of property owners, who had representation in their government and were neither poor nor idly rich. Locke's letters to Clark were first published anonymously in 1693, and then became Some Thoughts Concerning Education, which went through 24 editions by 1800, five of which Locke supervised before he died. Locke advised that the temperament of the child should be observed so that having once established your authority and the ascendant over him. The next thing must be to bend the crooks the other way if he have any in him. But he counseled a light touch concerning physical discipline, which was an innovation. And he suggested that shame was a better tool than corporeal punishment. Locke's system for bringing up male children to become men of property and affairs involved an austere diet. Trained bowels, hard beds, early rising. And plenty of exercise outdoors with bare heads and wet feet in all kinds of weather. The fondness of mothers and superstitions of servants were to be minimized. Locke assumed that self-discipline in childhood would result in strong adults. Locke thought children should be educated at home, by sober tutors, with an emphasis on learning languages. He had no use for poetry or abstract, speculative learning, but advised that astronomy, geography, anatomy, history, and geometry be part of the home curriculum. He also advised that a gentleman's son acquire skill in at least one manual trade. Such as painting, woodworking, gardening, or metalworking. What are some of Aristotle's works and what are they about? Aristotle's Organon consists of six early works, categories, on interpretation. Prior analytics, posterior analytics, topics, and sophistical refutations. These, together with the physics and the metaphysic, address logic, language. The nature of scientific inquiry, and what philosophers have since called ontology. 
which is the study of things that are real or things that exist. These works demonstrate a systematic philosophic method of analysis and provide the results of that method in general areas of human knowledge. More specific scientific accounts are found in Aristotle's On Generation and Corruption. On the Heavens, and Meteorology. On the Soul deals with the general functions of the mind, which in Aristotle's Parva Naturalis are applied to specific functions. Such as remembering, dreaming, sleeping, and waking. Aristotle's works on biology include the history of animals, parts of animals, and on the generation of animals. The Nicomachean ethics and Eudemian ethics constitute Aristotle's theory of moral virtue, whereas his political philosophy is put forth in the politics. The rhetoric discusses oratory and persuasion and the poetics contains his theory of tragedy as an art form. What is occasionalism? Occasionalism is the theory that nothing in real life ever caused anything else. God determined everything that each thing would do when he created the world. So, when one pool ball hits another and the second moves, the first pool ball does not cause the second to move because the second ball was already programmed to move that way on its own. Occasionalism holds that everything that seems to interact is like to clock side by side with one a fraction of a second set ahead of the other. When the faster clock's handles move, it only looks like it's causing the slower clock's handles to move. What are some details of Sigmund Freud's life that led him to his work? Freud was born in Freiburg, Germany, but raised in Vienna, Austria. He studied medicine at the University of Vienna, specializing in neurology. In 1886, Freud married Martha Bernays. They had six children, and the youngest, Anna, herself became a noted psychoanalyst. Freud's youngest son, Ernst, was the father of Lucien Freud, the celebrated 20th century portrait painter. Biographers of Freud assess his family life as happy and stable, providing much needed support for the controversy that swirled around his startling and original psychological theories. Freud's mentors J. M. Charcot and Joseph Brewer investigated hysteria and Freud became interested in the psychological aspects of this disorder because hysterical patients have physical symptoms without underlying disease. Freud and Charcot published their clinical findings of how talk can change patients' ideas. As a treatment for hysteria, in their studies in hysteria, 1895, as Freud developed a sexual interpretation of the causes of hysteria, Brewer distanced himself from him. What was William James' main contribution to psychology? J. 
James developed the same theory that was independently developed by Carl George Lang, 1834-1900. The Danish Physician and Psychologist It became known as the James Lang Theory of the Emotions. The theory is that emotions are our experience of changes in our bodies. Benedict de Spinoza, 1632-1677, had held that emotions are the effects of our beliefs, while René Descartes, 1596-1650, in Passions of the Soul, 1649, had expressed an earlier version of the James Lang theory. Our common sense assumption is that emotions are reactions to events in the world that are mediated by our understanding. By contrast, the James Lang theory held that our bodies react directly to the world and our awareness of this physical reaction constitutes our emotions. Who was George Santayana? George Santayana, born Jorge Agustin Nicolas Ruiz de Santayana y Borras, 1863-1952, was a philosopher, poet, art critic, and author of the international best-selling novel The Last Puritan, 1935, New Edition, 1936. His father was Spanish and he was born in Madrid, but his Scottish mother brought him to the United States when he was nine and enrolled him in the Boston Latin School. In 1889 he received a Ph.D. in philosophy from Harvard, with Josiah Royce, 1855-1916, as his advisor. In 1892 he accepted an instructorship at Harvard and later became professor of philosophy. Teaching there for 20 years. Santayana students included authors Conrad Aiken, T.S. Eliot, Robert Frost, Wallace Stevens and Walter Lippmann, as well as U.S. Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter. Santayana retired from Harvard in 1912 and spent the remainder of his life writing and traveling in Europe. His main publications are The Sense of Beauty, 1896, Interpretations of Poetry and Religion, 1900. The Life of Reason, 5 volumes, 1905-1906, Skepticism and Animal Faith, 1923, The Realms of Being. 4 volumes, 1927-1940, Persons and Places, 1944, The Middle Span, 1945, and My Host the World, 1953. In addition to numerous other books and essays, Santa Yana's published correspondence to over 350 respondents runs to eight volumes. How have consequentialists responded to criticism? Some consequentialists, such as philosophy professor and author Kai Nielsen, 1926, have simply bitten the bullet and asserted that whatever saves the most lives is good. Nielsen is famous for his 1972 article in Ethics, in defense of utilitarianism, which provides the example of a fat man wedged in a cave, the waters are rising and his companions are trapped behind him. 
Nielsen asserts that if the fat man were humanely dispatched by an exploding stick of dynamite. Conveniently on the scene, there is no violation of morality. Consequentialists have responded to the criticism of being unjust by claiming that Rule consequentialism can allow for justice because a just rule will result in better consequences. And in the long run unjust behavior will fail to improve people's lives. For example, in an immediate situation a doctor might sacrifice a healthy patient so that six others who need organ transplants may live. But the rule followed in the sacrifice of the healthy patient would undermine confidence in doctors. And in the long term more harm than good would result from killing the healthy patient. Others have pointed out the obvious problem of calculating consequences in the future. Another strong objection to consequentialism, voiced by Bernard Williams, 1919-2003. Is that the focus on results with everyone counting the same undermines the integrity of an agent by ignoring the importance of personal projects to that agent? In a famous example, Williams imagines that a traveler is asked to kill one Indian to save nine more from being shot. He argues that the consequentialist approach violates the importance to the traveler of his own moral identity as someone who does not kill others. How did William James express his own will to believe? In the 1880s, James wanted to apply scientific methodology to mind reading and spiritualism. He could not find collaborators in the Harvard academic community. But in England at that time both Alfred Russell Wallace, who had discovered the theory of evolution at the same time as Charles Darwin, and the moral philosopher Henry Sidgwick, 1838 to 1900, and his wife, Nora, were already interested in subjects of this sort. James became part of a group of intellectuals who went to seances and carefully investigated reports of supernatural events. They also counted reports of apparitions that occurred on the same day the person whose apparition appeared, had died. This so-called census of hallucinations resulted in a statistically significant correlation between day of death and appearance of that person's ghost. However, James thought that the sample of 17,000 would have yielded more reliable results if it were 50,000 and included American as well as British apparitions. James was also very skeptical of the table wrapping and spirit directed writing that were routine at seances. And he wanted to exclude mediums from the ranks of reputable spiritual researchers. What was John Stuart Mill's formulation of utilitarianism? Mill showed how the principle of utility can be used to account for individual action and collective values. As a consequence of individuals seeking their own happiness. The good of society as a personal goal might be a result. Social values such as justice, in Mill's account, 
do not benefit society as mere abstractions. But only if individuals seek them out in their own lives. What needed to be reconciled between Karl Popper and Thomas Kuhn? Karl Popper, 1902-1994, claimed that scientists ought to change their theories when they were falsified and that the hallmark of a scientific theory was its ability to be falsified. Thomas Kuhn, 1922-1996, believed that, in fact, many accepted scientific theories had plenty of known, falsifying data. The problem was that Kuhn's account did not allow for progress in science. According to Popper's criterion of falsification, and that Popper's theory seemed to be unrealistic, What is the story about Nagel and the spider? While Nagel was working in William James Hall at Harvard University one summer, he noticed a spider that lived in the men's urinal. Every time the urinal flushed, the poor arachnid would make a mad dash for its life so as not to drown. Nagel was concerned about what would happen to it when classes were in session and the urinal was flushed with greater frequency. After long and careful deliberation, Nagel decided to liberate the spider. He carefully removed it from the urinal with a paper towel and placed it in a corner of the room. At first the spider did not move, and Nagel assumed it was getting its bearings. He left town over a holiday weekend, and when he returned the poor spider had still not moved. It was quite dry and quite dead. Nagel recounts this episode in The View From Nowhere. 1986. His implication seems to be that even the greatest compassion and best intentions may miss their objective. Due to a lack of understanding of the circumstances of another. How did Hume proceed philosophically to create his science of the mind? Hume formulated and applied, over a large range of subjects, two main principles. First, all of our knowledge is the result of either sense, impressions or reflections on the workings of our own mind. Second, no matter of fact can be proved a priori, or before experience. As Hume put it, all the perceptions of the human mind resolve themselves into two distinct kinds. Which I shall call impressions and ideas. He held that the sciences of the natural world and beliefs about human society are the result of empirical investigation. The truths of mathematics and logic are known without investigating the world. For this reason, they are not about the world, but about the workings of human minds. Our sensory information, which gives us immediate factual knowledge, is more compelling than our ideas. As Hume stated, the most lively thought is still inferior to the dullest sensation. Hume had no use for past philosophical projects that contained 
a priori speculation about the workings of this world or the next. Here is how he summed up this doctrine, if we take into our hand any volume, of divinity or school metaphysics. For instance, let us ask, does it contain any abstract reasoning concerning quantity? Or number? No. Does it contain any experimental reasoning concerning matter of fact and existence? No. Consign it then to the flames, for it can contain nothing but sophistry and illusion. What is early modern philosophy? Early modern philosophy is mainly centered on intellectual activity in the 17th century. With some overlap into the early 18th and late 16th centuries. Early modern philosophy was modern in its concerns with epistemology, or the nature and justification of human knowledge. The fact that the scientific revolution was by then taken for granted. And a new acceptance of logical argument and fact-based reasons as necessary ingredients for the practice of philosophy. However, what made it early modern was the continued importance of religious issues. The background social need for philosophers to assert a belief in God, the continued reaction against Aristotelian scholasticism, and the unstable political context prior to the existence of strong nation-states. What were Alcmean's innovations in medicine? Alcmean, c. 500 BCE provided new answers to the question, what is health? He explained health as isonomia, or physical equilibrium. This equilibrium was a balance of opposites, which can't be restored indefinitely. Therefore, all living things die. Who was Friedrich Hegel? For sheer intellectual firepower, George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, 1770-1831, was probably the most brilliant thinker of the 19th century. He was a philosopher who could think about the entire world with an Aristotelian comprehensiveness. If not an Aristotelian lucidity.